Hello there, it's Alana Tucky, and in this video I'm going to show you how to find critical T values with your calculator if you have a TI-84, and I'm just going to quickly review how to find it with a table if you have to, if you don't have a TI-84, or if you just want a quick reference, which quite frankly I have a TI-84 and I use the table all the time. Okay, so let's use this part. All right, so we want to find T sub 0 0.02 with 20 degrees of freedom. So now remember from back in chapter seven that when you have a subscript after a Z or T value like that, that means that the area in the right tail is equal to that value. So 0 0.02 is in the right tail. Okay, so we are going to need our inverse T function inverse t function. Now inverse t takes the area in the left tail just like inverse norm does. So we need 0.98 because if there's 0.02 in the right tail there's 0.98 over here in the white region on the left side. Alright so then all you need is the degrees of freedom. You don't need 0 and 1 and all that stuff which in our case is 20. So let's see if this works. Oop, I quit out of that. Alright so we want to go to distribution we want to go to inverse t, and again, 83s do not have this function, only TI-84s do, the new kind of TI-84s. The area was 0.98, degrees of freedom was 20, paste, enter, and there it finds it. So 2.197, and there's your result. Okay, so now how do we do that with the table? Let me just remind you real quick. So the table, you would go to the T table, which is the one I'm in. Now the T table actually works with the area on the right hand side. So you said the area on the right hand side is 0 0.02, so you go to the 0 0.02 column, and then you drop down to your degrees of freedom, which we have 20 degrees of freedom, so that's right here. 0.02 column, 20 degrees of freedom, you get 2.197, which is exactly what we got with the calculator. Calculator is a bit more accurate because this is always rounded to three decimal places, but you get the general idea. All right, next one. We want the T value such that the area in the left tail is 0 0.005, and that is not the right picture. Hold on one sec. There we go. That's the correct picture. All right, so the area in the left tail, which is over here, is 0 0.005. So we're going to have to do inverse t, 0 0.005, comma. Now our degrees of freedom is n minus 1. So since n is 23, our degrees of freedom is 22. Again, we use 0 0.005 here because inverse t takes the area in the left tail. So this is the left tail, so it's 0 0.005. Whereas the one up here, we need the area in the left tail, but that's over here in this entire white region. So that's 0.98 on that one because this one's over on the right. We're expecting a negative answer here because remember the middle is zero, that's your center. So we expect to have an answer that is negative. Let's see if that works out. So go to distribution, number four is inverse T. So you can hit four or you can go down to it with the arrow keys and press enter. We want 0.005, our degrees of freedom is 22, paste. And we get negative 2.819. Okay. All right, let's see if the um, table again backs us out. So now remember the table only does area in the right tail, which is no big deal because the T curve is symmetric, just like the normal curve. So if you find the one on the right, you found the one on the left. So the area we were looking at was 0 0.005 right here. So if I go to the table, go to 0 0.005, there's my column, and then I want 22 degrees of freedom, so I'm going to go down here to this row, and there it is, 2.819 right there. And again, the, the table only gives positive values, so to get the negative value for this one, you just have to make it negative, so it's negative 2.819, which is what we said it was. Oops, right there. There's one I did it by hand, and you can see the next one coming. There we go. All right, so last one. So what about a confidence level? So if you have a 98% confidence level, that's the middle is 98%. So that means alpha is 0.02, because that's the two tails put together. It's your complement of 98%. And then alpha over 2 is 0.01, right? Because each tail then has to be 0.01. So if you want the one on the left, you can do inverse T, 0.01. 
01, comma, now your degrees of freedom is N take away 1, so that would be 16. That'll give you the one over here on the left. If you want the one on the right, it's the same idea, but it'd be 0.99 because you have the 98 plus the 01, right? 0.98 plus 0.01 makes 99. So let's see. Now they should be the same number. Honestly, you don't have to do it twice because if you know one, you know the other because the graph is symmetric again. Oops, I did inverse norm. That is not what I want at all. I want inverse T, which is number four. There it is. All right, so, oops, oops. Oh, I'm, I'm messing up all over the place. Let me quit. There we go. So distribution, there it is, number four. There we go point oh no, I don't remember point oh one point oh one and then our degrees of freedom was 16 I want to say 16 because it's n take away one so 16 paste enter so there's the negative one coming up and then if I want to do it again for the positive one again you don't have to but I just want to prove it to you if I grab inverse t type point nine nine There it is, 2.583. So this is negative 2.583, and this is positive 2.583. Okay, and again, you, you don't really have to go to the trouble of doing this twice. Once you know one, you know the other because it's symmetric. Let me grab the table, and let me show you. So the area in the tail was 0 0.01, right, because we had 90%, and our degrees of freedom was 16. So there it is, 2.583. That's the 16 row. That's the row you're looking at right there. And then the column is the 0.01 column. So once you know one is 2.583, then you know the other one is negative 2.583. And a confidence interval needs both. So you have to have both the positive and the negative. Whereas the two above it, you don't need them both. This one only is the area in the left tail, so you only need the one on the left, so it's negative. This one's only the area in the right tail, so you only need the positive one. All right, so we're done with finding t values. I'll be back here to show you how to do a confidence interval and find a point estimate. See you then.